All right, welcome back, everybody. May the Most High bless you. I pray all is well with everybody as we give the Most High all the honor, the glory, and all the praise. For the word of the Most High is quick and powerful, and it's sharper, and I mean sharper than any two-edged sword you can think about. It's piercing even to the divine ashanda of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I want to talk about losing people on the way. Losing people on the way. On this walk. This walking in the faith and not by sight. I have a word from the Most High just to encourage all the true believers right now that have lost so many people. And I'm not talking so much of the ones that have died and went on, loved ones. I'm talking about the ones that's alive, that's spiritually dead, who have left you alone because things got too hard. They really don't want to follow the Bible, the Word. They rather live worldly than to live godly. So my title once again says, Losing People on the Way. That's what Christ done. Lost a lot of people on the way. Some started out and then they gave up. Some was only with him because of what he could do for them. And you got people right now who will hang around you just to get all they can out of you. And when they can't benefit off you, they will leave you. You can go ahead and say amen. And if you don't want to say amen, you're the ones that's trying to get all you can out of somebody. Let the church say amen. So when you think about following our Savior, how many people do you lose? Mostly family, friends, homeboys and homegirls, some folks that we should have left alone in the first place. But sometimes this road seems very lonely because it seems like I'm just in it by myself. You just in it by yourself. But we know that the Father is right there. It's right there. But when the Father remains silent sometimes, it, it gets a little bit hard, don't it? Because the ones that you expect to be along with you are no longer with you. So you got to hold your head up and, and stay in this race. And no matter what you're going through, your mind is made up that I'm going to stay in it. The things that we all have gave up for the Father. The people that we have left alone. It was a blessing. I'm talking about the ones that we needed to leave alone. It reminds me of something Sister Lady D always says that some people come in your life as a lesson while some do come in your life as a blessing. So I'm taking a good look at who I'm hanging around right now. I'm taking a good look at family. I'm taking a real good look at church folk. I'm taking a look at everybody. I'm discerning. I'm watching and I'm looking at the heart. And I'm really seeing now who's really going to follow this word because following this word don't feel too good a lot of times when people leave you alone because of all their little so called reasons let them leave you alone because if we not careful you are gonna let others bring you down so losing people on the way how many have we all lost on the way how many are we losing right now, my brothers and sisters? When you look at the first disciples, they were called by Christ to follow him. And you know what they did, and I love this, they left everything behind. Our father told Abraham to leave his family. And when you think about leaving folk behind, leaving everything behind, if you start questioning and wondering this, and should I grab this person? I'm going to go ahead and grab my auntie. I'm going to grab my big brother, my little brother. We're going to all leave together. Uh, grabbing the wrong people will mess up where God is trying to take you and bless you with. So when he say leave it alone, leave it alone. So when you lose people on the way, the ones that you are losing ain't with you in the first place. Mm. Y'all catch what I'm saying? When you sign up for this, I like to say, when you make that decision, you better know what you are getting into when you say, I'm going to take up my cross. 
I'm a follower of Christ. You better really understand what come with it because a lot of people ain't cut out for it right now. They done jumped out the race. But those disciples left everything behind. Now, what are you willing to lose? Do you want to keep your same hoist lifestyle? Do you want to keep selling dope? Hmm. Do you want to continue to live the crazy lifestyle? Or are you willing to give all that up to follow the most high? Because once you make that decision, don't go back on it. Expect the unexpected, as grandma used to say. See, many people, many people preaching this, this, this prosperity gospel now, and this this feeling good and, and so a seed of this and to pump you up with this, pump you up with that. But I'm not here to talk about no prosperity right now. Because if you're not talking about your soul prospering, you ain't talking about prosperity, prosperity in all areas of your life, you ain't talking about prosperity no way. You're talking about worldly prosperity, which don't have nothing to do with getting in the kingdom. Because what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? I'm talking about persecution right now. I'm talking about what church folk want to skip over and preachers want to skip over. But I'm talking about suffering and, and, and being persecuted and losing folk and doing things sometimes that you really don't want to do just because you're in this race and you love the Father that much that you done gave your life over to the Father. That you done took your little so-called plans and throw them away because your plans didn't line up with the plans of the Father. I'm talking about these folk leaving you, lying on you, gossiping on you, don't even like you and even want you dead when you're losing people along the way. Whosoever wants to save his life will lose it. See, that's a statement in the Bible the majority don't want to hear. Because to save your life, you got to lose it. But he also said, but, but whosoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. Many start out, but many will leave. So when you look at how many people left Christ, how many left him because of the truth? How many left him because the free meal stopped? Uh oh. So many hung around because they said free food, free food. The ones that hung around because I need a healing. But when that road got tough, where was they? Expect to lose your brothers, your sisters, might even be your own mama. Might be your daddy, your best friend. You can't let other people mess up your blessings. You can't let other people stop you from moving forward. So when you lose others on the way, you keep your head up and you keep moving in the faith. Because everybody that come up to you ain't for you no way. See, once again, this video is, is for most of us who have lost everyone pretty much. That's why I say we done lost people physically, but I'm talking about mostly the ones we done lost who are dead spiritually. They dead. Ain't no life in them. They dead spiritually. I'm reminded of, of, of something that our Savior was saying in John, 1 John 2 and 19 because he said they went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have, rem they, they would have remained with us. But they went out. So they would be shown that they were not of us. So the ones that leave you, they wasn't with you. So I'm about to make a lot of church folks mad with this because everybody is starting out in the church. But everybody ain't starting out in the body. Somebody catch that later on. A lot of people that you see singing and preaching and shouting and dancing and speaking in tongues and laying hands and doing everything that you see don't mean that they of, of of the most high. We better get a great understanding on it. It's a lot of churches that Satan have set up. It's a lot of preachers that's under Satan's authority. They preaching Satan's message. When our Savior got hit with his hardest times, many people left him. 
That's why I say some people are only with you if they can benefit off you. They can see what they can get out of you. And when they can't get nothing else out of you, they will reject you. They will leave you. They will talk bad about you. And they would even want you dead. You ever notice how our Savior was never really concerned about a huge crowd? Huge crowds would follow him. But really, did he tell a lot of huge crowds to follow him? Or was a lot of people just really in the crowds because they wanted to be fed? But how many wanted to be spiritually fed? Spiritually fed. Because one thing about our Savior, he knew what was in the crowd. And he knew how the hearts were. And it was also religious folks, Pharisees in those crowds. When you look at John 6, and you start getting around verse 66, when you start looking at what, what our Savior was saying, he was giving the words of eternal life. It didn't feel too good to a lot of them disciples. And let me let me give you a news flash. It was way more than 12 disciples. And the rest of them, they took off. Jesus started telling them about hard times and having faith. And you know what happened? Some of them didn't like what he was saying. They started murmuring. They started complaining. They started realizing, hey, man, I gave up my life for this. Now, nah, let me go back to what I was doing. Because when I say this, say, you cannot come to me unless the Father makes you want to come. Uh-oh. Let me rephrase that. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. See, the Father don't make us do nothing. Let, let me correct myself on that. Because our Father didn't create robots. He gave us free will. So he don't make you do nothing. So it's going to be up to you to make that decision if I'm going to follow or not. Paul had a young man leave him and said, I'm going back to the world. Where things was a little bit more simple at. Because he saw what Paul was going through. So when people look at you as an example and how disrespected you get, how you will get beat on, lied on, talked about, mistreated, they'll think twice about being in this race. Y'all, those disciples I'm talking about in John 6, they turned their back on Jesus. They turned their back. When he told them those things, they turned their back on him. They quit following him. But you know what he said? After that, he asked his 12 if they was going to leave him. But old Simon Peter, he said, you know what? There's no one else that we can go to. Your words gave eternal life. Simon Peter said, we have faith in you. I'm talking about the same Peter that denied him. He said, we are with you. And Yahshua, right then, said, I chose all 12 of you, but one of you is of the devil. Mm. See, he knows. See, you might can fool folk sometimes. But you can never fool the most high. Why? He looks at the heart. So if you got 12 friends, expect one of them to be a devil. See, last time I checked, I can't count. Y'all see how I said that backwards? I can actually count how many people I could really depend on who are really with me. I said I can count it. That means it's few. Because if you got a whole lot of friends... You better check what's wrong with you. But if you got a few people in your corner, then you're on the right track. I say we chose his disciples and said one was of the devil. That has proven itself. So when people are leaving you along the side, don't worry about it. And let, 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 me, let me break this down because even those who leave you, don't you find it amazing that often time, Brother K. Ray, they come right back looking for you because they remembered what you can do, how you can do it, and how you were. 
at some point of time in life, they always come back and need you again. Well, in the Bible, some of those same ones went back looking. They went back looking for Christ. Not because of what he taught them, but because of how he fed them. What he done for them. They never did catch what he was truly saying. They was just caught off of caught up on what he could do. Well, you know, he fed the multitude. You know, when I think about that, a lot of people I know, they just look at that miracle. Wow, he fed the multitude. How did he do that? Whoa, that's a miracle. Oh, what a blessing. But let me tell you something. That ain't what I focus on with that. Yes, he fed the multitude. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because food always drop. Free food especially always drop people in. But, it wasn't so much of, the, the miracle wasn't so much of how many he fed physically, but the words that he spoke to them and fed them spiritually. Now y'all catch that. Because if you can draw a bunch of people in, that's the best time to minister to a crowd. Food gonna always draw a crowd, even in our day's time. Have a cookout, watch how many people come over. Have free food and watch how many people will show up. See, I, I look at this because of the line of work that I do in dealing with people. Food draw a crowd. A lot of people pass out food, but how many people passing out a word? See, if I give you some food physically, then I want to talk to you spiritually. Because it's, it's, I need you to be in good strength. and when, Because if you don't have food in your body and you, you're real weak, you're going to collapse. You're going to fall out. You might even faint. Whatever you want to call it. But if I can feed you, give you something to eat, and then give you something to eat physically, I've done my job. That's why I can't stand Thanksgiving. When folk want to go out one time out of the whole... 365 days in the year We're going to go out in November Y'all and we're going to feed the homeless Alright we fed the homeless Let's pack up let's go But how many people are feeding the homeless Spiritually When we know somebody Who's starving And I'm talking about now folks who's starving Spiritually Spiritually so the whole thing about Christ, uh, Father changing his message up at the end, uh, and I'm going to be obedient. I, I like this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I like the fact how you just brought this to my attention about feeding spiritually. Because he asked Peter, how much do you love me, Peter? He had asked him three times. How much do you love me, Peter? See, Peter was a great fisherman. But see, Christ was trying to get Peter to look at fishing in a whole other way. I need you to go feed my people. Feed my sheep. That same imperfect Peter, the one who denied Christ, who didn't have the Holy Spirit at first, but in his working in process, his work in progress, I like to say, that same Peter, look at what he done when he preached. 3,000 souls got saved and baptized. Mm. Let the church say amen So when we going after the laws If we are going after the laws Because some of us won't even leave the church building When you go after the laws Think about Really think about what Christ done in his ministry Because he went after the laws He stayed, he stayed more outside of the synagogue Than he did in there They let me know he went to the laws because I got a news flash for you. Everybody ain't going to come inside your church building. You better do something to draw them in there. Who let the church say amen. So once again, when I look at this, all just to sum all this up, losing people to gain eternal life. Losing people so you can keep yourself in line with the Holy Spirit. Losing people, even if it is your blood, your own kin folks. Losing them will be the big, I'm talking about the ones that ain't right, that's messed up, who ain't with you no more. Losing them is the best thing that you 
can ever do. Because hanging with them, being like them, you will end up where they're going. Moses let those same complaining, murmuring Israelites mess him up in so many ways. That's why you better be careful who you hanging around. Who you with. I thought about how our father fed them in the Old Testament with manna from heaven. All the things that he done for them still wasn't enough for them. That's why I keep telling people, feed my soul and not my emotions. So to all the pastors out here, as I wrap this video up, who are doing right, don't think because so many people are joining your church that they're going to stay. To all the minister of music, don't think because everybody's jumping in the choir stand, they're going to be for that choir, for that church. We get so hyped up because of a number, but let me tell you something. God ain't concerned about quantity, but quality. You can have a, a church full of folk, a choir stand full of folk, and you can have a bunch of devils in your church. I'm not caught up on numbers, and I never have been. The numbers I do like is seven. Hmm. I have my favorite numbers in the Bible. But I mean, I'm not caught up in, we got to have a big choir. We got to have a big this. We got to have a big that. You know why? Because the bigger the things are, the worse they get. The harder they get. The more you got to deal with. But if you got bigger, you got a bigger church and bigger things going on, amen. I'm not hating on nobody. Y'all know I'm not a hater. I'm a congratulator. So when I looked at when I looked at how he fed them, and then I look at what 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 God was really showing them, not only can I feed you physically, but if you follow me spiritually, you will be spiritually fed the rest of your life. Just like Jesus told that woman at the well. You would never thirst again. He wasn't talking about regular water. But look at what Jesus did. Went toward her. If you don't spark up a conversation with the laws, if you don't never get outside of your building, stop talking about we're going to grow. Because you know what your growing is? The same folks that's in there, same messed up folks who ain't trying to get no better. Everybody is not in the race for the right reason. And to all of us who are doing outreach, keep in mind, the majority of Jesus' ministry, once again, he was going after the laws, not going away from them. We keep turning people away, but our Savior went their way. So y'all, that's my time. If we're going to pray, why worry? If you're going to worry, why pray? I pray that y'all have a blessed day. And uh, yeah, we did have another earthquake, um, but we all right. We all right, my brother. So we, we have an earthquake every day now, but you know what? I'm not going to, like I just said, if I'm going to pray, why worry? And if I'm going to worry, why pray? Because if I, if I was to start worrying, my prayer would be in vain. Worrying is a lack of faith. So I don't want to walk around talking about I got little faith like a lot of people I know do. I got huge faith. I love you. Y'all take care. This is from the heart. And may the most high bless you and keep you in perfect peace. Peace out, y'all.